Hi everyone, this is Bob, the old ham, and this is part three of the resurrection of a uh, SA-2060A Heathkit Deluxe Antenna Tuner. This is the 2 kilowatt antenna tuner, and uh, I wanted one that was larger because I have a homemade uh, kilowatt uh, solid state that I built and uh, works beautifully and so I wanted to have a bigger tuner. I also really didn't need to have one that was automatic tuning. I prefer to have my tuning uh, points marked in a book or on a sheet and just turn the knobs to those numbers and I think that'll work just fine. But uh, this is a continuation here of what was going on. I got a couple things to show you. First of all, this is the SWR box, I would call it, which is on the back of the uh, SA-2060A. And uh, these three are through ceramic insulators. I say through because they go through the panel. And uh, here's the other side of them. Now these have these long screws and when, they, when you assemble this in the manual they have you bolt the screws to these copper strips which are which are silver plated and uh, you got the three and you position them in the right position and then you shove them through these holes and then you put nuts on the other side to make connection to these strips here now I've got these strips pulled back because they're really springy so I pulled them back with a couple of these clip leads just to get them out of the way uh, I didn't want to bend them out of the way I want them to go right back where they were, so I pulled those back. Another thing I did, which I think is important if you're going to have to get in there, is I took a tiny, tiny screwdriver, which I've got laying right over here, this, this tiny screwdriver here, and I put a little dab of E6000 glue on it, and you might be able to see a little reflection there. There's, that's where it is right there. I put a little glob of it right there. And I put a little glob of it right there. A little glob. And then I put a little glob on the other side. Each one of these has a glob on each side of E6000. Why? To hold these in. Because they're just barely stuck on there with the little cork insulators that they supply. And it was a little tricky to get all that back in there just right. So I decided, hey, I'm going to glue those little guys in with a couple dabs of glue so I don't have to mess around with them if they come loose. And I did the same thing on the back. Little dab of glue on each side of these and then I let it dry for a couple of hours. Okay, then I'm looking at this uh, SWR box as I call it. And uh, this has got the switch in it here where you switch from one antenna to the other. And you've got these three screws that come out. Well I looked at this screw right here and the nut was back I'd say almost a quarter of an inch I mean it was way back on the back of this uh, threaded it's a little tiny threaded rod it's not really a bolt it's a little tiny threaded rod about two inches long and the, the nut was completely loose back there and the top one too and I mean you could screw them up and down and everything talk about a loose connection now, the thing is uh, you're running a kilowatt of power here and if you got a loose connection like that, it's going to burn, it's going to arc, you're going to have a mess. Uh, and so uh, it could mess up your uh, linear amplifier too with high SWR and things like that because of that. Well, I got to looking at that hardware. And that's your typical Heathkit hardware, which is zinc plated steel. And I thought, hey, I think I can solder to that. And these are beautifully clean in here. Uh, and they, they didn't look like they needed to be uh, cleaned or anything before trying soldering after all these years. So I got my great big Weller soldering gun. I've got a D550 Weller soldering gun, which is the bigger one. I also have a uh, Weller 8100 or is it 8200? One of the other I've got, which is a smaller one. I think either one of these would do the job. And I took some of this... Uh, I took some... I'm, I'm, I'm manipulating the camera here so I can handle it with one hand. I uh, took some paper towel. See the burnt spot on the paper towel? And I took my little tiny screwdriver that I just showed you and I shoved this paper towel 
up underneath this threaded rod here down below there put the paper towel underneath there took my 6040 uh, Kester solder really good solder and my soldering gun and by golly I was able to solder that right up now this paper towel underneath there kept any possibility of solder getting into this switch because I've dropped solder into a switch before and it soldered itself right to the contact and oh man I really messed that switch up so uh, putting this under there just in case the solder drops so that it doesn't get where you don't want it anyhow these things took the solder beautifully no problem at all you can see there all three now soldered all over the there's two nuts there one below and one up on top how do you get those tight enough with with a lock nut or a lock washer in there even how do you get them tight enough with the two little wrenches uh, the two little heath kit wrenches uh, and uh, of course if you have one of these tuners you may have gotten it uh, uh, without the wrenches because you bought it from somebody else used so how do you get that see you had these two little teeny wrenches and how do you get these tightened up properly on here? So soldering them, I think, is a really great idea. And they took the solder very, very well. And this little trick of putting this towel, paper towel down here, and working it underneath so that the solder cannot get to that switch. And I did that with each one of these. And boy, they came out really nice, as you can see. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put paper or fiber, fiber washers on all three of these. And the washers I'm going to put, I'm going to have to make them, I think. I'm going to use uh, a uh, file, manila file folder. I'm going to punch out little brown circles using a circular punch which I got at Harbor Freight. I got a set of those perch punches some time ago. And then I'm going to punch out the centers and make myself little round washers to fit in there because you want those washers as a strain relief for the ceramic. Uh, that keeps the ceramic from cracking. And there is a strain relief under these already. There's a brown washer under each one of these already. And so those may not be absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do that. Another thing I'm going to do is I wanted to put something in there to keep the tension on so they didn't get loose because they still could loose up a little bit. Uh, so I decided that I would go, I'm going to put uh, uh, like three of these split ring lock washers on each one of these. Three split ring lock washers in each one of these. These are very springy little washers and they will maintain a tension on those or a pressure, excuse me, a pressure on those to maintain a good connection. So uh, that I'm going to do too. So I wanted to show you that. Now another thing here in part three I wanted to show you are these. These are flexible couplings. Uh, they advertise them on eBay. I, I went to uh, Amazon. We have Amazon Prime and they were listed as uh, shipping free of charge. Uh, sometimes you get free of charge too even if you're not Amazon Prime. Anyhow, I ordered these to uh, install on these shafts. Now these have got two sets of set screws which should do really good. And I, I used this uh, Allen wrench here to tighten them. And I used a pair of pliers then to, to turn it out here. But I did find that I could get in here like this on some of these and tighten them up nice and tight. And that is really good. And with four set screws instead of two, they do much better. And they are a flexible coupling. So I like that. So I bought enough of those to go and do the whole thing. So I'm going to take all these out, even the one down in here that, uh, that I had previously modified. <laughs> I've, got four, I've got four screws in there, uh, 632 uh, uh, machine screws, 
And I'm going to pull that out and put one of these flex couplings in there for the rotary inductor here too as well. So that's the way things are going here. This is coming along nicely. I'm finding more things all the time that need to be done. And uh, this thing back here is really, really would have been a troublemaker if that, if I had just let it go. I thought, well, I'll just let it go. It looks good, you know. But you can't see inside the box. So I thought, okay, I'll take it loose and examine it. And then I find that this one nut back here was screwed way back and this was loose as a goose. So uh, need to get that taken care of and the soldering did the job just beautifully. But if you do that, don't forget to put the paper towel behind it or something like that. And the paper towel got burned a little bit. Uh, that don't hurt anything. You can see here the burn spots. This is one, one point I did. This is another point I did. So you can see the burn spots on the towel. But the towel did its job and I'm really happy for that. Uh, what else do I want to talk about here? Well, nothing else right now, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this all back together now. And uh, after I make my little, my little uh, fiber washers for this out of the uh, file cabinet, file cabinet, <laughs> manila, vanilla, manila, <laughs> vanilla, vanilla file, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make these little washers. So I'll have six little, uh, little washers I'm going to make out of that uh, manila file. And what else? I guess that's it, guys, for right now. But you got to be real careful on these things. Any heath kits, be sure all the screws and nuts are tight. And uh, I just can't believe that they, they had a deal like this in here uh, on this. So I just don't know what to say about that. To me, that's a, that's a no-no. to have. They should have had something better. Uh, to do that with they didn't even they didn't even put a lock washer in there I didn't check the manual though to see if they didn't require a lock washer uh, But this one didn't have it so now they're not going anywhere because they're soldered and What else I guess that's it so we'll just leave it at this point and I'll uh, go ahead and finish things up here and put it together so I guess that's it and uh, Everybody uh, stay warm out there. It's very cold here today, 28 degrees, and it's snowing right now. And uh, so we had, we had, we're, we're going to have a nice day here, though. It's always a nice day when you can go down into the shack and work on a piece of equipment or get on the air. That is a lot of fun for me, especially since I'm an old geezer. So we'll just say 73s and good DX.